available and a link tree for you guys to be able to click through and be able to register for everything that you need to have. Um, as a reminder for that, it's going to be three hours of Jumpstart activities. Then it's going to be one hour of cross training with Central Pet and then one hour of animal handling training online. That one hour is for every animal that you're working with, um, cats and dogs. Um, let's see what else is there. Over here we have Command Central for dog walkers. This will not make sense until you complete your fundamental animal handling. Um, there's different things about move, there's different things about colors, and there's also this primary section. None of it's going to make sense until you actually do handling. Um, the key pieces of this is that we want to keep the space clean as possible and then also move items if needed. Um, over here we also have our first aid kit. Any injury that happens here on Pima Animal Care Center property, we have to report it. That is because Pima County will pay for your injury services if you have a fall, if you have a bite, if you experience anything here at the shelter that is abnormal, um, we will cover that, but we need to have evidence of it happening here at the shelter. Could you pass me that green biker by chance? Thank you. What's usually there is the book of all things. There are 1,200 volunteers here at the shelter. There are 150 or so staff members. You guys see things before we do, 99% of the time. So we have a book of all things here in the volunteer office. I think we also have something in the chat room similar for animal symptoms. Um, but what we have here is uh, the symptom log for diarrhea. So if a dog has diarrhea for three days specifically, uh, we put it on a diarrhea protocol uh, to make sure that it does not have parvo. If it comes back as it possibly does have parvo, that animal receives a different kind of treatment. For the most part, we have animals that have diarrhea because of global stress. Much like what Coco has over here, he, um, He's just very stressed out, so we've been losing a lot of weight, and he did really need a foster. Um, let's see over here. We also have the symptom log. If it's anything that's not diarrhea, let's say we came in here and Poco had uh, a cut on his back leg. We want to report that here. Let's say he's not seeming like himself. He's a little bit lethargic, and it seems like his abdomen is a little more swollen than usual. We put that here. Um, any sort of symptoms, including even stuffy noses and such, are listed here. At the very back of the book, if it is not actively on fire, electrocuting, or flooding, and I say that because it's not that I don't trust you, it's that I trusted somebody else a little bit too much, please put it here. If it is actively on fire, flooding, or electrocuting, please report it to somebody, please. Um, thank you very much. Over here, if you want to pull out your smartphone and then be able to take a picture of that sign in the corner of the whiteboard over here, we have the gate code. Your first gate code that you receive, two, four at the same time, and then three is for any of the exterior walkthrough gates. The second gate code is the volunteer's walkthrough gate, which is one, two, five, and then the drive-through gate, which is going to be everybody's favorite gate code, eight, six, two, eight, pound. The best way to reach myself and Kelly is going to be via email. It may take us the same day. Uh, we may reply within like minutes because we are at our desk trying to keep up with emails, or we may take a couple days to be able to respond depending on what the question is. Um, and how much we have to investigate. But that email is going to be the best way to reach us. If you try calling me, I will only check my calls on Fridays, and I will only be answering voicemails. <laughs> um, and that is because the volume of calls that we receive is just super, super high, so we can't handle emergency overflow. Um, an emergency over email, though, I'm able to check that and get to that as soon as possible. We also have the Pack Volunteer Communications page, which is where you can also receive immediate uh, updates on Facebook. Um, so that link is going to also be in the uh, after school email that I send you later today. What we're not going to go over because the time is just a little bit too big is that in the back right area we have a kitchenette area um, where you're able to store your food, also make coffee, also be able to heat up any food items that you have, um, and then also get drinks and refresh drinks and get those over there. Um, please keep it clean. If you have some people who think that you know sugar all over the place is perfectly fine, it's not. Um, some other people who think I'm going to leave this in the fridge and leave it there until it turns into its own biome. Don't do that, please. Please don't do that. Um, let me get that over there. There's also additional lockers back there, too. So if you come here from work to school and want to be able to store something securely, you can be able to lock everything in there. Um, the last thing that we'll go over now. You guys are officially volunteers. Your first shift, I need you to have your badge with you. If you do not have your badge with you, we have guest badges over there in the corner by where that staples little round thing is in that black box is guest badge. If you do not have a badge, I will automatically go into adoption mode and say, would you like to meet this dog? I promise you that. Um, if you come in and you are dressed looking like you volunteer at Pima Animal Care Center, you may want to expect that you will be asked questions. I recommend wearing plain 
plain clothes. And the plain clothes I'm going to ask you to wear are closed toed shoes. So anything creepy crawly does not crawl between your feet. Um, and also, if you step in poop, then there's at least a little bit of protection. And also, because we want to be able to move freely. Long pants, no leggings, and no shorts at all. Um, I will highly recommend a durable material like denim. Um, if you come in corduroy, that's also fine. Um, please do not come in packable pants that are rip off and then have another extra pair of pants underneath. You do not need to do that much. Um, you just need to be comfortable. You will notice too, as you are volunteering, that there are some volunteers that do look like Indiana Jones. You do not need to look like Indiana Jones with seven different ropes around your neck that are all different leashes and then having a chain leash and all these different things. Um, we have some volunteers who even have specialty categorized fanny packs. Um, so they have four fanny packs, three fanny packs on them that are all categorized. You do not need to do any of that until you feel comfortable or if you feel comfortable to ever do that. Uh, if you're coming into pack and you have pets at home, be sure that they are updated on their vaccinations and then also make sure that your shoes especially do not come in contact directly with them. Um, these are some of my retired blue shoes that I just use these for my work and then they stay in my car and they do not come in contact with my pet because what happens if I accidentally step in cargo and hit the car? What happens if I was working with a dog and that dog came out as positive for leptospirosis? Um, we want to be sure that we are not cross-contaminating that to our resident pets because we don't want to be doing that. Um, it's the same story too for your shirts and then also pants, making sure that you are washing them before you come into contact with your resident animals. I have had less issue with my clothes being an issue, more so than my, uh, my um, shoes. Thank you. Um, the last thing I will leave you guys with. You guys are now part of a team of 1,200 volunteers who are part of the number one volunteer program in the nation for animal welfare and the number one shelter in the world, basically. Um, we have a 90% survival rate for thousands and thousands of animals. Um, and we really have a very high expectation about what we do here. Um, don't be intimidated by that. Welcome it and embrace it because we do have a great um, It's also a personality, it's also 1,200 different personalities that you guys are going to get used to. Keep in mind, the number one thing that you guys all have in common is that you love, enough, uh, you love animals enough to be here, to volunteer your time, and to want to do that life-saving work here in the shelter. Um, so if you have a conflict with somebody one day, just understand you guys are here for the same reason, doing the same job. Um, unless you take Coco home, then it's a